perfect. What is going on, everyone? My name is Joseph Reynolds, and today joining me is a man that recently went to America overseas, conquered, came back, and returns 2 0 now as a professional fighter. The lion himself, how are you feeling? Not too far, not too far off of that last fight you just had, buddy. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling great, honestly. It was a uh... It was an amazing experience. Very grateful that I was able to, to go out to America and fight so early on in my pro career and get that experience kind of out of the way. I guess it's kind of, it, you know, it's, it's a different feeling fighting internationally than it is on the regional scene. But it didn't feel too unfamiliar because obviously I've done it. You know, I've done the IMAFs and I've fought overseas before. So, but yeah, it was a brilliant experience. I feel great about it. See how happy with the result. Yeah, and to, you mentioned that in terms of having that experience of being at the European Championships as well last year, do you feel as though it, it made transitioning over, obviously, going to America for your second profile a little bit easier as you were sort of a bit more aware in terms of the flying over to a different country and competing where it isn't on your homeland or in the front of a friendly crowd for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, especially when you're, you're cutting weight, I guess it could be pretty off-putting uh, doing that well on a flight. But I've, I've dealt with it all before. Obviously, the difference is flying over to Italy. I don't know how long you're on the plane for. It's like an hour or something. Whereas when I went over to America, it was two flights. And it was like 10 hours long. So I kind of knew what it was going to be like. But obviously, it was, it was a lot longer flying. And then, you know, when we landed, my day got extended by six hours. Uh, because they were six hours behind over there. So obviously, that made dieting a little bit trickier as well, right? Because, you know, I'm not eating much as it is on the diet. and then the data then get extended by six hours you know you just kind of take those things as they come and work around them yeah and um, when the opportunity did first come around in terms of being on ufl was it one of those that just sort of came out of the blue a little bit or was it something you knew may have happened what was the sort of process in terms of getting that fight uh now nah, so so my manager had, um i think he first mentioned it to me just after i signed so i signed with um uh, Ruby, I think it was September time last year, and then December we were already talking about fighting on a show in America. I think originally they wanted me on their on their February show, but sorted out visas and stuff. It kind of just worked out better to get on the May one. So I, I knew it was coming for like a good, you know, four months beforehand. Uh, we just weren't one hundred percent sure when it would all get confirmed. Yeah, and to get those opportunities so early on as well, obviously only a second pro fight, was it something that in terms of before making that pro switch you expected to happen or is this just sort of come about a lot quicker and how has it been sort of adapting sort of being a pro as it is to being an amateur? Yeah, I mean, I, I knew that I'd have good experience, like uh, good experiences coming to me on the pro scene purely just because of uh, my amateur record, right? I obviously fought the who's who on the amateur scene. I'd done the IMAFs, I won titles. I knew that that hard work would have carried over to the pro scene. And that's why I ended up, ended up getting signed to a, a management company so early as well. It was just kind of like, you know, the hard work I put in my amateur career paid off at pro. So I was expecting it all to come. Yeah, and then even so reflecting back on your pro uh, amateur career as well, I believe since 2021, you've fought around eight or nine times now to have that vast experience, obviously, you mentioned your father, who's who. There's lots of big fights that even I can remember now just thinking about that you've had in your amateur career. But to get those experiences in like that, how pivotal do you feel that has been since going pro? And do you feel as though it's almost been seamless in terms of the style of training that you've took since being a pro? Yeah, I mean, I, I've always trained hard uh, when I was an amateur. Um, you know, there was, a, there was a lot of fights that perhaps I wasn't supposed to win. I guess I was put in there to lose. Uh, and I've dealt with those high pressure situations at amateur. So I knew moving on to pro that there would be pressure on me, but nothing I hadn't already felt. And then in terms of training, all we really did was increase the rounds to five minutes and then start adding the elbows in. But the elbows was, you know, that's something I already was already working at amateur because I do Muay Thai. So it, there wasn't, a massive change up to be perfectly honest yeah and then even sort of taking a look now in terms of being a pro and what could be next do you see to be a part of this next generation of wealth welsh fighters to sort of come through already competing in america what does that sort of feel like to be a part of this next generation and already finding success really early on in your pro career 
yeah i mean i you know it it, it, it feels amazing to be honest uh i know that uh you know you've got two welsh fighters you had me and Yoan both going over to um america to fight on ufl that's going to open the, the doors for not just only welsh fighters but uk fighters as well you find on the these international shows you know you've got josh o'connor uh who's fighting on bellator in september so there's loads of different welsh guys coming through and just to be a small part of that is yeah it's, it's really big yeah and then even sort of like the growth of welsh mma over the last year it keeps popping up there's new names that always keep appearing to see the growth of the sport what's it been like to be around as well and have you sort of noticed that growth happening in terms of being more people being at the gym trying at the sport i see more well-known names now that are coming up through welsh crops of fighters do you see that more and more now as you are sort of training for these next fights that come up yeah i mean we we've always uh the gym i train at in abitillary at celtic pride we've always had like quite a decently strong mma team up there but uh at craig ewan's academy the other gym trainer in cardiff I think that MMA team side maybe a year and a half ago and, you know, the first few months or, you know, maybe, yeah, first couple of months, you'd only have like five people on the match. You'd be lucky if you get like a, a decent amount of numbers. And now every week there's 20, 30 guys in those MMA classes and they're the busiest ones in the gym. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's been great to be around as well. Yeah, and then taking a look in terms of the last set, obviously, at UFL, in terms of the performance, obviously, it was a great one at that. In terms of getting those experience and going in there and doing that, how was that sort of feeling like on fight night before you made the walk, during the walk, and even after it as well? What were the sort of emotions that were sort of going through your mind during that fight? It, you know, I I, um, I think, obviously, it was high stakes uh, purely because I got that opportunity really early. I'd flown all the way to America. I, at that point, you know, I'd been in America nearly a week before the fight. Uh, I kind of made an agreement with myself that there wasn't, it wasn't actually possible for me to lose. I just kind of switched my mindset. Losing wasn't an option as far as I was concerned and I had already won the fight. Uh, that wasn't just for myself. It was more the fact that a lot of people had put a lot of time into me. Obviously, I had my coach, Giff. He had come out, spent the whole week with me. Uh, yeah, uh, I didn't, it was probably the calmest I've ever been before a fight. Uh, uh, all that mattered was that I was going to win. That's all I was focused on leading up to the fight. Yeah, did it feel any different in terms of having a different crowd there? I'm sure the crowd that was there was most in support of the opponent. Did that ever sort of play your mind a little bit? Or how was the crowd sort of, and how do you normally react to the crowds when you do have them there? Uh, I mean, yeah, the, the, because... I fought in Tennessee in my uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. The guy I fought was from Nashville, so from the same state. Um, obviously, there's that kind of he had that big pop when the when his name got announced, but it, I still don't think it compares to when I fought uh, boys in Every Vale um, and the crowds kind of you know when when I fought Levi and when I fought Kenzie. Those fights in Every Vale, the crowd then was still so much louder than the crowd in um in Memphis. But that's just the Welsh, isn't it? Which is much louder than everyone else. So um yeah, it wasn't anything I hadn't felt before. But yeah. 100 percent And even sort of looking ahead into the future, does it look like a UFL return, something that's going to happen? It seems as though is incredibly impressed with the performance. And as well in terms of sort of how the fighters are treated there as well, is it a promotion that you want to keep keep performing on or what does seem to be the next step for you now? Yeah, hundred percent. I'd like to get back on a uh, on UFL. Um, I nothing's confirmed. I'd like personally. I'd like to get on the December show that they've got. I think it's December sixteenth. They've got a, a show in um, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to get back on there. And the whole the way they they treat the fighters the whole fight week was brilliant. Like we had a we got there on the Monday. We had a whole itinerary for the week when they wanted us. Um, looked after us anything we needed they were there for us obviously they've um got the health care and the uh the stake or what they call the stocks in the um in the business for the people in the, the like uh the tournament formats um but yeah 100 i'd love to fight for them again it was a it was a great experience and they really looked after us 
Yeah, and then just a final thing for myself is obviously the UK fans are more than aware of your name, but maybe the American fans that have only got to see you once so far in UFL, what is it that they can expect to see from yourself moving forward and what does the rest of this year hopefully look like for yourself? Plenty more uh, first round finishes. I like a first round finish. I like to think, uh, especially for someone who's a grappler, I'm a very excited fighter. So if I'm in a fight, you know, it's not going to be boring. Um, what the year looks like for me, I'd like to get out twice more, uh, kind of set a goal for myself at the start of this year, 3-0 and as a pro for the end, but I've kind of changed that in my head. I'd like to, be, I'd like to have four pro fights by the end of the year, hopefully be 4-0, and, four and but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, there you go. That is everything from myself. Would you like to take a chance at any sponsors, anything like that? Obviously, just feel free to go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, just the, the usual, really, obviously. Two gyms I train at, Craig Ewers, uh, Celtic Pride. I've got all my sponsors. I've got Christy from Chaos Sports Massage. Uh, I've got Sam from Grip Shrem, Dean from ACMOT. Um, Jack, my barber, does my hair for free. And do, 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 I'm probably missing uh, a couple more, to be honest. But I can't figure them off the top of my head. But yeah, that. Uh, that, that'll do for now. I can't figure the rest of them. Yeah. We'll get any, any oh. ones that were missed, I'm sure we can get in the description. The opticians as well. They sponsor me as well. So. There we go. Well, as always, I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. I'm sure it's a name you're going to hear many more times this year and only in a good way as well. Thank you for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. All right. Cheers.